Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. And if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. We're going to start with a new way to do limits, a tool that we didn't have before in Calculus 1. It's called L'Hopital's Rule. When we're taking limits, if we get any of these forms, when we try to plug in and we get, we get these forms, these are all indeterminate forms. The reason we call these indeterminate is because they tell us nothing. They don't tell us that the limit does exist. They don't tell us the limit doesn't exist. And they definitely don't tell us the value of the limit. So an indeter indeterminate form, you have to do something else. And it's great when you can just rewrite the function algebraically, but often that doesn't work either. Luckily, there's another option. L'Hopital proved that if in the case of the first two forms, when you have either zero over zero or infinity over infinity and the sign of the infinities doesn't matter, then the limit of the quotient of the functions f over g is exactly the same as the limit of the derivative of the top function over the derivative of the bottom, which is pretty cool. So all we have to do is often take the derivative of this function and take the derivative of this function and then try to evaluate the limit. So let's look at an example. Evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. I'm actually going to work this in two ways. One, I'm going to use factoring as we would have done in calculus 1. Nothing wrong with that. It works out nicely in this case. And then two, we're going to try L'Hopital's rule and see if we get the same answer. We would have plugged in 3 and we would see that we get 0 and 0. And 0 over 0 is one of the indeterminate forms. So we would try factoring. So we get the limit as x approaches 3 of x minus 3 times x plus 3 over x minus 3. And then the x minus 3 is cancel. So we get the limit as x approaches 3 of just x plus 3. 3. Now we can plug in because we no longer have an indeterminate form. So we plug in the 3 and we get 3 plus 3, which is equal to 6. Now let's work the same problem using L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of x squared minus 9 is 2x and the derivative of x minus 3 is just 1. So we get the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x over 1. Now I want to point out the only reason we're allowed to do L'Hopital's rule is because this is going to 0 and this is going to 0. And I also want to point out that when we use L'Hopital's rule we're going to write a capital L over the equal sign to show that that's what we're doing. So if you're uh, taking notes, and I hope you are, because writing this information down helps your brain process it, make sure that you have the limit written in each step, that you have the zero and the zero showing that we have a zero over zero indeterminate form. Oh, and then you put the L over the equal sign. So L'Hopital's rule only applies if you have either the zero over zero indeterminate form, IF means indeterminate form, or infinity over infinity indeterminate form. So in this case, we had a zero over zero indeterminate form. So that's why we were able to use L'Hopital's rule. So now we have the limit as x approaches three of just two x, and we can plug in and we can get six, which is the same answer we got before. Yay, math works. <laughs> okay, so you can use either method. You just have another tool in your toolbox, but there are uh, problems, which we're going to see right away, that we would not have been able to use factoring, and L'Hopital's is very powerful. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.